I want to welcome all of you to our beautiful Vũng Tàu city to attend our uh, seventh South China Sea International Conference, Cooperation for Regional Security and Development, co-organized by the Do Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam, the Foundation for East Sea Studies, and the Vietnamese Lawyers Association. Now I want to invite Mr. Nguyễn Văn Quyền, President of the Vietnamese Lawyer Association, to chair the opening session. And I also want to introduce Dr. Đặng Đình Quý, President of the Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam, to deliver the opening remarks. And Mr. Nguyễn Hồng Linh, alternate member of the party's Central Committee, Secretary of the Provincial Party Committee of Bà Rịa Vũng Tàu Province, and Chairman of Bà Rịa Vũng Tàu People's Council, to deliver the keynote address. Please, thank you. Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We now will start the opening session of our conference. First of all, let me introduce Mr. Nguyễn Hồng Linh, the alternate Central Party Commissioner, the Secretary of the Provincial Party and Chairman of the People's Committee of Bà Rịa Vũng Tàu Province to make the um, speech. Please. Kính thưa ông Nguyễn Quang Quyền, Chủ tịch Hội Luật gia Việt Nam. Kính thưa ông Đặng Đình Quý, Giám đốc Học viện Ngoại giao Việt Nam. Kính thưa quý ông quý bà, quý toàn thể, quý vị đại biểu, các học giả trong nước và quốc tế. Ladies and gentlemen, Maria Vũng Tàu is the coastal province in the east part of the uh, southern region in the key economic zone in the south of Vietnam with the total natural area of uh, around 1,900 square kilometers and population of 1.1 million people. Um, it borders Ho Chi Minh City to the west, Dom Nai and Ben Thuận provinces to the north and uh, southeast and, and the uh, South China Sea to the southeast, Bà Rịa Vũng Tàu has a long coastline of 305 kilometers and more than 100,000 square kilometers of the continental shelf. The province has eight administrative um, units, including six districts and two cities, including the Khun Dao um, Island District, um, which is 185 kilometers away from Vũng Tàu. So it is located as the gateway towards the South China Sea of the uh, eastern part of the southern region with uh, warm weather and uh, very um, few typhoons, um, very good, rich potential for the development of marine economies, for example, uh, the uh, oil and gas exploration and processing, um, logistic for ports and tourism, uh, sea tourism and aqua processing and aquaculture. And over the years, Vũng Barrier Vũng Tàu has always centered its economies around the uh, marine economy. And with the awareness that uh, the respect and the full compliance of international law um, and building a peaceful and friendship environment will be very central for its economic development. And over the years, with such good conditions, um, Vũng Tàu, Bà Rịa Vũng Tàu has um, recorded great and good growth. For example, um, from 2011 to 2015, GRDP um, growth 4.24 percent. Um, if GRDP, kể cả dầu khí, tăng 4.42 phần trăm, trừ dầu khí tăng bình quân 5.03 phần trăm. Including um, oil and gas, of 5.3 percent, um, excluding oil and gas, the industrial production grew by 4.9 percent, um, including oil and gas, or 7.5 percent, excluding oil and gas. Fishery grew by 5.7 percent, and uh, logistics from ports increased 8.5 percent. Tourism increased by 26 percent, and the uh, income per capita. Biển Đông trong thời gian qua diễn biến hết sức phức tạp. Do đó, 
Excluding oil and gas was uh, about $5,200. And ladies and gentlemen, over the time, the uh, South China Sea developments have been quite complicated, and therefore it is very important that the DAV, Vietnam Lawyers Association, and FESS organize this um, international conference on South China Sea. And we believe that this will be a very good time for us to exchange our giúp các lãnh đạo, cán bộ của tỉnh hiểu rõ thêm những nội dung của hội thảo để thực thi cho đúng trong quá trình phát triển các ngành kinh tế biển. Views and uh, so that we can further contribute to the development for regional security and uh, development. So with that, I hope all of you good health and this conference a great success. I wish you have a very nice stay here in Barrio Vũng Tàu. Thank you very much. Ms. Thank you very much, Mr. Nguyễn Hồng Lĩnh. And next, may I invite Ambassador Dr. Đặng Đình Quý, President of the Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam, to make the opening remark. Mr. Nguyễn Hồng Lĩnh, Secretary of the Barrio Vũng Tàu Party Committee, Chairman of Barrio Vũng Tàu um, People's Committee, and the alternate Central Party Commissioner, distinguished guests, colleagues and friends, Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam, the Vietnam Lawyers Association, and the Founding for East Sea Studies, I would like to extend our warmest welcome to you all, especially to our friends and colleagues from all over the world and Vietnam who have sent in their research findings and got ready to engage in in-depth discussions on some of the topics most important to the, this region today and tomorrow. I hope you will have two productive days here, and I hope you will also have time to explore the charm and beauty of Vũng Tàu City, one of the best tourist and vacation destinations in Vietnam. And in pursuit of common interest, I hope this conference will bear fruits for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, a year has passed since our sixth South China Sea International Conference was convened in Da Nang. The South China Sea in 2015 has apparently not experienced heavy storms, but dangerous undercurrents have still swirled beneath its surface, threatening to imperil the lifelines of international trade, jeopardize the lives and livelihoods of millions of fishermen who have trawled many traditional fishing grounds in the South China Sea for thousands of years and disturb the stability, security and development of the entire region. Some have argued that the South China Sea for the most part has remained peaceful and stable and that navigational freedom and maritime security in this body of water have stayed unaffected. And yet, there have also been growing concerns about recent developments in the region, about actions and behaviors of the relevant parties that are deemed contributing to further eroding trust, complicating the situation, and aggravating threats to the peace, security, and stability and development in the South China Sea. While those two viewpoints persist, the South China Sea status quo is undergoing rapid changes. The balance of power between those directly involved in the South China Sea is changing rapidly. The scope of presence and frequency of activities of all parties concerned in the region are changing rapidly, and the scale of actual occupation by the respective claimants in the Paracels and Spreadleys is changing rapidly too. Over the years, we have witnessed greater efforts by the claimant states, by ASEAN and by all other South China Sea stakeholders to improve the contours of the regional security landscape. ASEAN and China have carried on discussions on the implementation of DOC and establishment of COC in the South China Sea. Several regional and international organizations, foreign and group groupings such as ASEAN ARF, EAS, ADMM, ASEM, G7, have continued to voice their recognition of the importance of ensuring maritime security and freedoms of navigation and overflight in the region and call on the concerned party to exercise restraint to refrain from committing acts that could further complicate the situation and alter the status quo and to resolve disputes by peaceful means. 
Over the years, we have also witnessed enormous efforts by the, uh, the regional and international scholar community who have closely followed the developments in the South China Sea, provided timely assessments of the policies and actions of the concerned parties, and offered numerous recommendations for regional governments to consider. The essence of those recommendations has been for the parties concerned to consider placing their national interests within the broader context of common regional and global goods and acting more responsibly in the South China Sea so as to protect their own interests and maintain their international image and standing. All those efforts have led to greater awareness of the South China Sea situation in the international and regional community and encourage those involved in the decision-making process of the parties concerned of the parties concerned to think more carefully and thoroughly before deciding on a course of action in the South China Sea. They have made the South China Sea as a litmus test on the credibility and commitment of many countries to the enhancement of peace, stability and prosperity in the region. And yet what is worrisome is that the South China Sea situation is becoming more and more complex and the likelihood of the South China Sea devolving into a regional, if not global, hotspot is ever increasing. Does that mean that our efforts are not strong enough, not up to the level required by the changing situation on the ground, and that we have not arrived at effective measures to stem the reoccurrence of hapless events? Distinguished guests, in an ever globalized world, the importance of the South China Sea to the security and development, not just for this region, but also for the world, will only grow with time. In an ever-globalizing world, the interests and destinies of states and nations are, as members of the international community are already increasingly linked to each other. And in an ever-increasing world wherein states all look to advance their own interests with or without full awareness of the linkages between those respective interests, international law and norms should play an ever-important role in guiding the pursuit of those interests. Perhaps dreams of a truly peaceful and stable South China Sea where disputes are resolved justly on the basis of international law and where development opportunities flourish might still be far over the horizon. It might probably take several decades more for them to materialize, which means our foremost objective now is to manage conflicts and preserve peace and stability in the South China Sea so that every regional stakeholder has the chance to grow and prosper. Such a stability can only be maintained if all the parties concerned in pursuit of their own interests consider and respect the interests of others if they all conduct themselves in accordance with the principles enshrined in international law and norms that have been recognized and accepted by the majority of nations in the international community. Distinguished guests, with all these in mind, I hope our conference this year will build on the success of our six previous conferences in both spirit and outcome. On the basis of candor, cooperation, and constructiveness, let each and every one of us put ourselves in the other's shoes to understand and sympathize with each other. And on the basis of mutual empathy and scientist objectivities, let us discuss and together work out new policy recommendations for high practical value for the all parties concerned in the South China Sea. Discussion will undoubtedly benefit not only from the erudition of our uh, dedicated scholars, but also from the insights of those directly involved in decision making. And I encourage all government officials present here to contribute their voice so that our conference will be a more useful venue for South China Sea dialogue. I would like to also note that besides similar contents in the previous conferences, our conference this year has two new features. One is the addition of a session on assessing the impact of global events on the South China Sea situation, and the, uh, the other is the arrangement of a simulation exercise on possible scenarios in the South China Sea and responses from the concerned parties. The mode of discussion will also change a little bit. In addition to discussions between the speakers of each session with other scholars and participants in the crowd, each session speakers are encouraged to encourage in discussions and debates among themselves. Last but not least, from this conference onward, we also invite young scholars, young leaders of our time, to participate in our conference series so as to help develop a next generation of scholars that are committed to dedicate their research to and seeking practical policy recommendations for the South China Sea issues. Distinguished guests, let me once again thank you for your time and support for our conference this year and hopefully for the beyond. My sincerest thanks also go to the participants here, scholars, friends, colleagues, and new journalists, especially the secretary of the Bari Bumtao Party Committee for allowing us to organize our conference in this beautiful city. And um, I also wish to note that um, yesterday we have a very good um, event in Kuala Lumpur, so we also take this event to give a great applause to that. And on behalf of the organizers, I would like to declare